Hi all, here's something a little bit different for the channel. Wayne and I managed to get hold of the Army Painter Complete Set 2.0, released only a month ago. We had a look inside, we did a little bit of an unboxing, uh, we had a look at the paints, what was arrayed, and we actually did a little bit of painting, so we painted 50 of the 90 different examples on models. Anyway, here it is, have a look, feedback, your thoughts, enjoy. Right, good afternoon Wayne. Good afternoon Graham and welcome to Wayne Manor. <laughs> Thank you very much. On a very hot day, um, we, we've, we're going to review the Army Painter speed sets. Um, first of all, this is, this is the old version 1 that was out. Um, this, how long was this on the market for Wayne, this one? Probably a year or so. A year or so. Reasonably well received. I know there were some issues with some of the Reactivation. Reactivations. Yeah. Um, this one's now been pulled. And this here is the new version two that's on the market. Yeah. Um, Expanded set, including metallics. Yes, indeed. So this one didn't have metallics. No. Um, but, but this one does. So yeah, it's got quite a variety of things. It's also got mediums in there, um, brushes, and all sorts of bits and pieces. Anyway, what we're gonna do today is we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing of this. Um, have a look, see what's in the kit. It's a noisy old fly, isn't it? Yeah, he's nice. gone now. Goodbye, fly. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is we'll um, have a look, see what's in here, and we might even have a go and try a few of the paints as well, just see how they how they how they play. Oh, I think so. Yeah, that's that's the plan for today, anyway. So um, right, so here it is. Been um. So 90 paints. So when did this actually come on the market then, Wayne? Oh, crikey. I don't know, about a month ago, maybe? About a month ago. So this is hot off the 90 paints. Good Lord. Okay. So you've even got a painting guide. That's useful for someone like me who can't paint. <laughs> so yeah, it comes with the uh, painting guide. And uh, What's that a then? sticker or something. Mm. And you've got box. Are these are these box sets, are they? They've actually no. They're all just they're just, just randomly just dropped in. Loose. Yeah. So what's that? That's so this is the medium. The medium. And some brushes. Army paint brushes. They're normally quite good, aren't they? So speed painter medium. Yeah. What have we got? We've got a uh, a monster brush. Yeah. We've got a slightly smaller one. Base coating brush. Yep. And we've got a uh, precise De detail brush. No dry brushes. No dry brush. Mm. But you wouldn't use that with a speed paint, would you? No, you wouldn't. So. Okay. So um, why don't we? Uh, Shall we have a look at some of the colours? So how many packs are there? There's one, two, three. Are they, are they packed for, in any particular way? No, they just come loose, but this is how you, you would not. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, yeah. Like this. Right. Okay, well, should we line them up and have a yeah. look see what we got in there then? Okay. Right, so what we've done, we've unpacked them all and we put them into their trays. Um, and there's quite quite a variety of um, paints that we can see here. Um, as I say, we just tried to group the blues, the greens, the um, pinks, the reds, even more greens, so there's two lots of greens, um, sort, sort of greys. greys, some sort of former yellows and honey colours and yeah. Flesh and metallics. Flesh and metallics. How many, where's all the uh, metallics? Uh, where are the flesh ones? These are here, so. As an example. So you've got peachy flesh, crusader skin, warrior skin, aged hide. All the, I mean, they've all, they've all got balls in, which is great. I know um, the version one kit did it as well. I, I didn't buy the version one, to be honest, but um, yeah, they're, they're certainly quite a selection there. Um, things that stand out for me are, initially there, there's some colours called... Um, 
me, are they? Pastels? Pastels. There's a, there's a, a range of pastels here. So, uh, where are they? Um, here you go. There's five, six there, which is something new. It'd be interesting to see how they paint. Um, it'd be also interesting to, I mean, you've got different, these, it's, it's important to point that these are speed paints, aren't they? So it's not like when with the old uh, Citadel triads, where you, had, you used to buy them packs for free this is a specifically a speed paint for exactly as it says on the tin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's quite important to point that out. So, you know, you've got one blue, but if you've got a light blue, you, you wouldn't be putting that on top of it. It, it is what it is. But um, yeah, quite a selection there. Um, also there is, um, where is it? They, they give you a, a big bottle of um, speed paint medium and a small one as well. Um, I did say to Wayne, I was surprised um, there's no varnishes in here, but as Wayne so rightly pointed out, sprays, you can't import and export those um, due to, to regs. But you can, from my point of view, you, you can get varnishes that are, that are in pots. And I, I do, I, I do uh, brush on my, my gloss for that varnish. So, I don't know, maybe, did, could they have added that as well? Maybe, maybe not, I, I don't know. Um, the inclusion of the brushes, I think, is a nice touch as well. So, yeah. So, a little guide there as well about how to speed paint. How to speed paint. I'm sure there's loads on YouTube, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks great. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to try some of the paints, see how they, see how they, how that, how they work. And we've got some some test figures here to paint. Um, and I've got my. Where is he? My giant warlord, which Wayne's already rolling his eyes at me. <laughs> My Hoppolite warlord, Greek city states. But there we go. So that's, let's see how we get on with these and uh, we'll report back. Right, so first of all, we, we thought we'd try the um, skin tones. Um, we, so we painted these and we gave them uh, what, three, four minutes to dry. Yeah. I, I think it's important to assess them after you've got to let them dry a little bit in the in the air you just can't slop it on and, and see so okay first one was this uh peachy flesh I, I painted this one and um i have to say i quite like it it's um nice sort of pinky caucasian uh, the, the paint seemed to flow quite nicely as well and i think that looks all right actually yeah, that's not too bad, not, not too shabby. This one, a Aged Hide, um, he's a little bit darker. He, the, again, the paint's flowed all right, but if you compare it to this one, he, he's, he looks like he's been on the old sunbed. He's just come out and he's glowing a bit. Um, or he's, he spent three weeks on Rhodes Beach. <laughs> but again, it's covered, it's covered it well enough, I think. And, and, and the paint flowed all right. Um, this one here, Wayne, um, on the, the right-hand side, he's painted, uh, painted it warrior skin, and, it, and it's definitely a, a darker um, color, Arabic maybe, or maybe even a Northern African uh, skin tone. And yeah, the, the paint has flowed nicely. And on the left-hand side, Crusader skin. Um, a little bit lighter, but not as pink as the um, peachy flesh. And again, that so there's there's a good variety. Here, here's, here's the one that's quite interesting. So I'll show you the pot first. This one's noble skin. Uh, it does look dark. Have, have they? I don't know. Have they uh, got well, the? Could be for an, you know an orc or something like could that. Could be for an orc, but you know, look at this. Fantasy figure. You know. Uh, Maybe, I mean, I, I know they've got to get fancy names for these paints, Wayne, but <laughs> if you look at that, noble skin, and you, you compare it to the the peachy flesh. Yeah, it's completely different. But the paint, the, the, the paint seems to have flowed all right. And uh, So which is your favourite? Me? It um, well, depends what I'm painting. I suppose, yeah, it's got the, this one here, the peachy flesh. I do peachy. like that one. But this one is quite good, I think. 
for me, the aged hide, I think you'd need to uh, highlight it a little bit or dry brush it after, whether that's what you should be doing with speed paints is against the ethos of it, I don't know. But um, what about you, Wayne? What do you think? Uh, well, Crusader Skin was the one that was uh, included in... Uh, version 1. Version 1. Uh, and I have used that in the, in the past, but uh, certainly have a look at the Peachy mm. as well. Yeah, that's and not. I quite like the uh, dark tone of the warrior skin as well. So maybe a mix of the two. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Nice. Interesting. Okay, Let's see what we got. Right, so we're trying the reds. So from right to left, what we've got here. So we've got Slaughter Red. Um, and Wayne painted the... There. Top, top of the shield is top of the shield to red and the bottom is blood red and yet you, you can see the difference right <laughs> and the bottom half of the <laughs> bottom half of the shield is blood red and that doesn't look too bad actually to be fair that looks all right yes yeah, definitely the uh, slaughter red is definitely a little bit darker um so now we tried Poppy red. Um, I'm just comparing it again. There isn't much difference between that and slaughter red, to be fair. Very, very little difference, I would say. But yeah, it looks okay, doesn't it? Um, looks all right. Right. This one's got a little bit more coverage on the which probably helps showcase the red a little bit more, but this one is uh, bright red. And the, yeah, the, the, the paint's gone into all the folds nicely. Um, yeah, that looks all right. And finally, this one here is uh, Carmine, Carmine Dragon. And, uh, some relevance, I'm sure. I'm, I'm indifferent about that, to be honest. It's it's almost a version on a red stroke purple. If you look at the base, it's almost a red stroke purple. Comments, Wayne, on any of those? Uh, yeah, I think any paint set, it's important to have a good, solid, strong red. Uh, and I think that uh, poppy red would sort of fill that brief and possibly blood blood red as well mm. so i could see uh, could well, see like, people using those colors I, the bright red i'm not so sure about the carmine or the uh yeah slaughter but uh, there we go there's the reds let's see what else we got right so we took a variety of blues um first one is uh here it is magic what Magic blue, I can't even read it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lightish blue. Um, and maybe it's me, I'm, I'm sure Wayne. Uh, we've let these dry for five minutes or so, so that they should have dried off a little bit. But the blues look. Um, do you know that, that? Remember the. I was just saying to Wayne earlier, remember the Windsor and Newton ink range? Um, I used to use them a long time ago when I was painting on white and just for a, a very quick 15 mil figure and they particularly the blues in the in the in the creases look that way um do you disagree wayne or do you agree is that the nature of the blue it is what it is it is what it is, it is, yeah. what it is. true next one is the beowulf blue a bit darker that's useful um because there's a nice dark blue um, you see it in the because it's so dark you see it in the creases less but um, it's come out all right I think and again it's, it's an ideal blue that you could put something on top couldn't you dry brush it or once this one here is royal robes and again it has that feel of the for me anyway the, the the magic blue um, it's a lighter it's a lighter shape if you compare the two 
don't they? The way they sit and sits in the in the folds and the creases. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a nice knuckle blue. Um, darker one, this one's called Highland Blue. That's, that's actually probably my favorite, I think. That one's come out really well. And finally, um, Tidal Wave. Mm. And they, yeah, they all, they all run into the creases nicely. That actually shows it off really nicely, the army painter effect of, of um, the way they, they drop. Um, for me, they're all much of a muchness, really. Wayne, observations? Uh, well, which are you going to be using for your French line, Napoleonics? Ooh. We're talking about my Hundred Years' Wars, aren't we? Or we're talking... No, your um, Napoleonics. Oh, no, Napoleonics. Yeah. Ah, ah, sorry. Okay, so which would I use for my French Napoleonics? Your sharp practice. Sharp practice. Fantastic rule set. I don't know. I'd go something darker then, I think. I'd, yeah. pro I'd probably go there. Be a wolf. It's more like an Imperial Guard. Yeah, yeah. Sort of blue, isn't I it? like that. But that's obviously a very fresh uniform before it's been on campaign or anything. But yeah, that's the one I would use. Good. Any observations, Wayne? No, I think there's a good selection of blues in the set. Well, we've we've choked, we've taken five out there, but how many other blues are there? We saw uh, there's various shades. Some have got a bit more uh, turquoise in them than others. Uh, others a bit more grey uh, and a bit more muted. So I think uh, there should be a blue for most occasions in there, whether you're painting Napoleonics or fantasy. Mm. Okay. Right, on to the next then. Right, okay. Green, so we'll start on the right hand side. Um, this one is called um, Absol Absolution Green. Um, yeah, it's not a bad green actually, I quite like that. <laughs> they always say blue and green should not, unless there's something in between, so probably the, the colors on the, the model probably don't help it too much, but um, yeah, it's a slightly darker tinge to it. Um, yeah, it's not a bad one. This one here on the right leg is uh, Forest Sprite, this, this side here. And I actually think that's quite a useful colour. I like that. I think, I think that one, it's got a, it looks a slightly dirtier green and I think, I think that one's got that one's got legs, I think. I quite like that one. And on the other side, we've got orc skin. Um, and for me, maybe that's a bit bright. I, w I wouldn't leave it like that. You'd have to dry brush it or put something on top of that. For me, I, I find that one a little bright. It, ideal for painting orcs, I suppose. <laughs> um, this one here, slightly brighter one. Um, Chili Dew, again, the historics, would you see anything quite that bright? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. What do you think, Wayne? Would you see anything that bright? Maybe some of your Hussars, Graham, or your uh, Empress Dragoons, or? Maybe, but yeah, early days. <laughs> One they've been on campaign for more than about two days. <laughs> but there's quite a bright green. This one's an interesting one. Um, malignant green. I think green, loosely, it's almost, a, it's almost a, a, like a, a dirty yellowy green, but there could be a place for that. Hmm. Thoughts, Wayne? They have at least a dozen greens or shades of green in the set so you should be covered for most most uh, instances uh, some are a bit more applicable to sort of fantasy type figures yeah, i think than, I think uh, so, than yeah. historical but they've got to cater for all all markets um i was just thinking if you were doing world war ii uh there are some in there, like um, this one called Camo Cloak, which we didn't show, mm. uh, which could be a good 
uh, World War Two sort of generic. But green. I'm looking over there now. There's an, at least another five or six, isn't there? Yeah, five or six greens that we haven't shown. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a, a quite a variety. Some of them, as you say, are, are catering for fantasy. Possibly because I'm not a fantasy player. Um, well, I think other people would uh, beg to differ there, Graham. <laughs> Well, yeah, watch my games of Saga, you know. <laughs> right, on to the next one. Okay, so we've tried a few browns on the horses. Um, so we've done two sides. So the first side is, um, it's like a... S right, okay, so we tried some browns. And here's the first one. So this is a satchel brown. It's quite a dark brown. And I, I was saying to Wayne earlier, um, we need one that we can use possibly for um, for the uh, chestnut brown. Which one would come up as a chestnut? Because it's a very popular colour. And maybe this one, maybe you could use it um, as a base. As Wayne did say, the, the way I've uh, applied the the, uh, the paint, maybe a little bit thickly, maybe it's pulled too heavily, maybe I haven't done it justice, very possibly. But it's not a bad one though. Not, I, I don't dislike it. This one... Um, uh, bony matter, that's what I think it says. Um, very light, um, as, as Wayne said, maybe a Palomino. Personally, I think it needs an, another, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit too light, maybe. Maybe mm -hmm. yep. some army painters, maybe they need two applications. It, if you was to put a second coat on, Wayne, you, you'd have to make sure the first coat is, is completely, completely dry. dry yeah. Would, could that cause some sort of activation problem, maybe? Shouldn't, shouldn't, it yeah. shouldn't do. Um, but if you're gonna, if it's gonna be completely dry, how long would you say you should leave it for? An hour, at least. Yeah, at least an hour. Yeah, yeah I think. Depends so. on the weather. Yeah, as well. It? You know, baking hot day like today, gonna dry a lot quicker. Yeah, I think so. But um, mm, not sure about that one. This one here, burnished red. Mm. Interesting. Very, very. As I say, very, very red in colour. Is that near a chestnut, maybe? Not, Wayne's nodding his head, so maybe this bit would be the one to choose for that. Um, seems to, seems to, seems to look okay. And the other one on the other side is ruddy fur, again lighter. Mm, not sure I like that actually. Um, I, I, I'm looking at it thinking, what could I do to enhance it? Whether you, you could dry brush it, whether that would be too, take too much, because it's quite light already. I'd almost want a tan if I was going to play it, something like that. Thoughts? I quite like those two, actually, the two that you've just slagged off. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> I think they're... Uh, There's no accounting for taste, no, is there? I think they're good horse colours. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. Mm. So, you know, put a bit of black on the uh, on the socks or the, the lower legs and a uh, bit of white on there I think could have a nice nice looking horse as you say might benefit from a little little dry brush yeah just to maybe but the this one here as you say is possibly near a chestnut than the one that I said earlier over here so I compare these two which one would you go for mm, this is possibly a little bit more chestnutty than that one on reflection there we go. Not too bad. Okay, onwards. Okay, so we tried some metallic. So this one here, um, Enchanted Steel. Not on the sword. It looks a little bluey actually, Wayne. Yeah, I think that's the intention to have a bit It's got a blue, blue. hue to it, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, that's quite an interesting colour, actually. I'm tempted with that. Um, and uh, Talos Bronze. Um, yeah, it looks okay. Typical bronze. I think looking at that, you'd need to put some sort of wash on top of it. I mean, we were saying about all of these metals. For me, I don't know, Wayne's the expert, but he's rolling his eyes. Um, I would put a non oil all over all these metals and maybe dry brush them after. Um, but that's me, maybe, I don't know. Um, this one in the middle, 
Um, which one was it? So the, 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 the body armour is uh, polished silver. And again, that would benefit, I think, from a wash. Maybe that would be better off used for the helmet and the, the spear tip and the, and the, uh, the shield for which we used um, broadsword silver. Maybe that would have been better actually as, as, the, as, the, as the body armour, to be fair. But they've come out okay. I mean, uh, I'm no master painter, but um, obviously there's many, many different techniques for painting um, uh, chain mail. You know, some people favour the favour a, a black undercoat. These are what did you say, sir? What's what was the uh, primer you used? It was um, wraith bone. Wraith bone. So with these metallics, uh, it is recommended that you apply them over a matte white or an ash grey colour primer. Ash. Ash grey. Ash grey. Isn't that a wraith bone? Nearly. Uh, wraith bones sort of like an off white. Yeah. I like it because it's got a slightly warmer uh, feel to it than the Corax white. Yeah. So, this nice. final one is brazen copper on the shield. Oh, I can't say I like that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's it's almost red. You know, if you look at the copper there on the um, description, it doesn't look the same, does it? For me. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I could see uh, myself using the other one, dark, one. darker of the chainmail, so the broadsword silver. Yeah. Um, so why don't we take a look at the golds? Okay. Okay, here's some golds. Um, first one, hoard bronze. It's um. It's a darker one of the, the bronzy, compared to the bronze ones we were using earlier. Which ones were the previous? There was cop, uh, a beaten, beat, uh, beaten copper and there was another one we, we used earlier on the, the, the batch just a moment ago. This one actually is probably more practical, I'd say. Albeit, I don't, <laughs> what, what, this looks green. On the on the graphic on the the front of the the jar, which I find a little confusing, really. Shame they couldn't have actually got the colour nearer. Um, next one, hoplite gold, and this is on the shield. That's actually quite nice, I think. Would you leave it like that, or would you put something on top of that, Wayne? Uh, I think I would probably add a wash into the mm. creases, you know, uh, an Agrax earth shade or something, if I wanted a bit more uh, yeah. definition. But I, I like it, it's a nice colour. It is a nice colour, isn't it? I, I quite like that, I agree with you. Yeah, that's, that's a worker. Three foot rule, Yeah. that one would be, uh, that would be a winner. So we've got golden armour, and this one is on? The scabbard. On the scabbard. On the scabbard. Fingers. Um, yeah, I, I I did this one, and I have to say it it ran into the creases really nicely, and I I quite like that as well. Um, a slightly darker than some of the golds that I I, I have used in the past. Um, I don't mean that in a bad way. I think that's quite nice. Um, another scabbard. This one here. Glittering loot. Again, let's go. Really bright. I mean, that looks like brass bright, I would say. Would you not say? Um, maybe you'd use it on your 100 Years Wars Knights on his scabbard, but whether you'd use it as an ancient one, I'm, I'm not sure. But that, that is a very bright one. And the final one is called Aztec Gold. Um, and it's a very greeny, they've actually got the colour right on this thing here, and it's a very greeny um, tinge to it. Um, I'm not sure where I'd use a greeny gold for. No. Uh, as you say, I think fantasy games. Yeah, interesting you, colour. Inter it's something that, you don't see too often. So. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? Um, for, and probably I don't see it because I'm, only, because I'm quite niche in 
historical wargaming really, but I'm not sure other people would find it a use for that, particularly uh, fantasy, fantasy players. Hmm. Interesting. Um, just as a quick point of note, looking at the, the bottles, um, in the bottom right, they, they, on most, of the, most of them actually give a description. So this one here, albeit is, is ruddy fur, it actually says in the bottom right, oh, that my eyes are crap and I can't read it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got shit eyes, but it's reddish brown, deep reddish brown. Um, whereas on some of the metals, uh, they haven't got that descriptor down there. So it's interesting that they've missed that out on some of the bottles and it's not consistent through them all. There we go. Okay, next batch. So, dark wood, put it on the shield. I guess uh, it does what it says on the tin. It's dark wood. <laughs> um, possibly not the best surface to show it off, but uh, it's a dark brown and that's yes, okay. Um, this one's interesting. This is a uh, sand, sand golem. Uh, and if you look in the bottom right, what's the descriptor say? It says strong yellowish brown. I'd say that's strong orangey brown if you look at it. But um, the spear and the, the shoes, oh, the footwear are painted. And actually, I quite like that. It's, it's, a, it's a very almost dirty orange, which I think could work with a lot of things, actually. I think, I think that's quite nice. Um, Pallid blown, pallid bone. Um, yeah, this is on the hair and on the shoes again. Uh, and I suppose you could use this as a cloth or a base for a cloth and the spear as well. Uh, again, that, that's a useful color, I think. Any, any sort of um, sandy yellows or tans almost are, are useful. So that's a nice one. Desolate brown, described as olive in the bottom right. Forgive me, but that's, that's, that's green, that's olive. Where the brown comes from, I, I really don't know. Explain, uh, Wayne, any, any explanation for that? Come up here. Oh, he's shaking his head, he's just, there we go. So, but again, it's a useful gr uh, color, um, olive. And finally, um, hardened leather on, on the saddle. I love this. I, I use this already and uh, this is a winner for me. So hopefully they've not meddled with the formula too much. And that is exceptionally useful. I use that a lot. Okay. Okay, next batch. Uh, the oranges and yellows. So we'll start from the right. This one is ancient honey, or as it says in the bottom right, yellow. Um, and it is yellow. It's not as bright as some yellows you, you sometimes get. It's, it's quite a dirty yellow. Maybe that's because it's dropping into the folds, giving a little bit of texture through the army painter characteristics. Maybe it's not the brightest. Um, this one here. On the right hand side it maize yellow and it says here vivid yellow so this one is a brighter yellow mm. yellows are hard to get right aren't they um, sometimes i think the paint might be good but it just doesn't showcase the, the figure doesn't showcase it well enough yeah it's okay and on the right left hand side we've got orange giant Fire orange giant, fire orange, fire giant orange. Good dick I am. That's easy for me to say. I can read. Um, and this is a light orange. Um, I'd say that's not a light. That's, that's a medium to dark orange actually. Um, and we've got a couple more oranges coming up, so we'll compare them as well. Um, this one here is uh, nuclear sunrise. Vivid orange. It's a nice colour, don't mind that. But if we compare that to the first one, 
there isn't a huge amount of difference in them, is there? Hmm. And the third one, this one is Zelot Yellow or Zelot Yellow. And this is orange, orangey yellow. Um, it, it has a slight tinge of orange, a yellow about it. And it does look slightly lighter, but um, I can't see a huge difference between all the oranges. Wayne? Observations? Yeah, always a tricky colour to get uh, a really nice strong yellow. I think this one's a bit uh, a bit more lemony in uh, yeah, colour. Yeah, yeah, I, I accept that. That's more of a lemon, yeah. Uh, that one, that one I quite like. I quite like an off, an off yellow, a dirty yellow. You dirty could, yellow. You could highlight that up a little bit. Yeah, I think there's work that this one here would be harder to work with than than that yeah. one, hundred percent. Okay. Right, so I think, is this a new thing, Wayne? Um, they've got a pastel range, haven't mm. they? Uh, uh, deliberately called pastel. So this figure here, anyway, they've got five. Is it five in there? Is there any more pastels or is this it? I think it's five or six. I think uh, six. So we've missed one off. But yeah. We missed Princess Pink off. <laughs> Princess Pink. What a great name. Anyway, so... This one is uh, pastel yellow, very light yellow. That's princess pink. Um, and as you can see, they're a very soft variant of the yellow. Maybe it needs more than one coat, do you think? Or it depends what you're painting. Mm, I suppose you're right. Again, this one here is a, a very, very light blue green pastel green and I'm not sure what you'd use that green for certainly not in historics as you say that would be other genres mm. my wife would like that in our bathroom actually I think I might have to take that one down with me <laughs> <laughs> um, very light blue yeah it is isn't it I mean, if, if it's going to be an ancient, it's got to be a little bit war tawny or it's got to be a little bit weathered. It doesn't look like it's being weathered, does it? But then a very light blue is odd. This one, uh, salmon, very light orange, pallid salmon. Possibly not putting it on the... Uh, the, the saddle for the horse it probably wasn't the best choice but it shows it off but I don't know you could almost mm. this one here on the Empress cloak uh, pastel lavender it seems to it seems to go on quite well um, a very light purple which is unusual to see a very light it is exceptionally light isn't it I, I don't mind that I think this work without and this is the one we didn't use of the, of the range princess pink mm. very light very light pink very light pink i'll say that's virgin on very light purpley pink isn't it wayne would you say yeah i think so right okay okay so in in the set there are 90 pots Every pot's got a, a ball in it, which is great, but I think all the version one ones had that. Um, if you was to buy all the pots individually, um, it would cost significantly more than it would do if you buy buy the set. Um, we've tested, we've, we've looked at over 50 here, so we've looked at over half of the set um, and we've looked at them. And I would say the majority of them work well. Mm, not sure about Princess Pink, to be fair. And and, and the pastels, are, are, I'm sure there's a place for them, but maybe, as I say, I am very niche in what I do paint. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of very good paints there, it's, um, which, is, which is great. And I, I must admit, this is the first time I've seen a lot of them and uh, I, I will go out and buy certainly pots individually 
will I buy the, the box set? I'm not sure. Um, but there we go, we're all, all different. Wayne, thoughts? Yeah, I think it depends on the variety of figures that you are painting, uh, whether you'd invest in the whole set or not, or maybe um, it's something you could do between uh, a couple or two or three of you if um, you know you had a, a mate who was particularly interested in fantasy and somebody who is uh, more into historical, then it might uh, make a bit more economical sense. Mm. Um, but it's a pretty comprehensive set. It's a very competitive market now. Um, both Games Workshop and Vallejo have their own uh, similar products. Um, but uh, I agree that I think some colours are more useful than others for us um, historical painters. And maybe over the next few weeks, we will uh, showcase uh, some figures painted using the set yep i think that's true yep i think that's good um not much else to say really i i do i do think they've missed a trick with the not putting the varnishes in but even even in a pot but uh maybe that would be next time but the medium are there the, the obviously you've got how many brushes did you get in the end three three, three brushes three quality brushes which is good and how much does a quality brush cost three or four pound a top a bit time a bit more yeah. yeah so that that's all all money as well um and yeah you know, they come in the, the container so i suppose that there's a, you could use that for storage as well so that's good but no um, i'll let you make your own mind up from what we've done here i hope um what wayne and i have shown you here helps um to to be aware to help you so you you can see what's aware with the army painter and their new range because it's only been out a month now you say wayne about that yeah, yeah so right. this this is fairly new so um yeah it'd be interested to see how well they do anyway that's about it listen wayne thank you very much as always you're welcome remember to like and subscribe <laughs> indeed uh take care everybody and see you on the next one <laughs>